Yeah. Everybody's okay with this. Also, show me orientation. I didn't put orientation on this, but make sure you show me orientation. And if there's one on the text, it hopefully will say show orientation. I, I can't remember if it does. I didn't write, I don't, I don't have a copy of it on the internet. How do you do this? Mm -hmm. Are you the final? Yo, yeah, wrote it. I just don't have a copy of it. Not at all. I, I spent basically the same over the years, but um, we did change a couple of little things. But I, I didn't, I didn't copy it. Um, I think it's just like a. It is a very comprehensive fi final, but it's not a difficult final. Okay, I really seriously over the years, our kids have done really well. We've had kids that get a hundred on the final. We have kids that get down to 40 sometimes. We talk on it, usually not, not so, but um, <coughs> it, it really makes it final. Okay. So let's move on. You can all do that. That's good. So this is what I mean. You're going to have to set your your the degree, your load to degree, you're going to have to set the parametric, and you're going to have to set your window to go from 0 to 360, and piece up 30, 15, whatever you decide to do it. Make it a little slower so you can see where it starts, and you can put your arrows out there. <coughs> yeah, I don't honestly know what happened here. Um, you do have to know, yeah, <laughs> you do have to know this formula. I know, I think something in it's different with my windows on my computer where I write this versus these because it does this only some of the time. I don't know why. So you will have to know this formula and you will have to know PERT. PERT is continuous. Question? Were you on your own calculator during the final? No. If you use your own calculator, I have to reset it. So if you want me to reset your calculator, I can do that. Okay. Um, it's hard to see. I realize this. Um, when this is annual, the whole thing is in here. Annual is 1. Quarterly is 4. This is 12. 365. And continuously is per. It should increase. But, and remember rounding on these guys? Do that book because this is money. Um, watch your watch that you flip this to a good decimal because it's a percent. Watch your time. Everybody good with this? This is pretty. We did it a while ago, but I think you do this in algebra two as well, right? Okay, stop me if you have any questions. Remember your basic, oh, this is the continuous way. Yes. Anytime you have a variable in the exponent, the only way to get that variable down is a parallel. The only way to get that variable out of there. I don't remember how to do this. Okay. So let's, let's do this. Generally, they fit this form. Y equals ABS. However, this said continuously, which is weird. So we're going to start with your 6,000 bacteria. And B, your rate is point, let's turn it to a decimal, per hour. And how long will it take till it's this? So this is our variable, time. Now, usually if we have a variable here and we take the log of both sides, when you have an, a natural log, you have to take the ln of both sides. You can always take the ln, even for a regular base. You can always take the ln of both sides. You can't always take the log of both sides. You could take the ln right here and then do a product rule. Or you could divide by this guy first. This is where your exponent belongs, just to the E. So you can divide by 6,000 and even just keep this as a reduced fraction. 
Don't bring it down to a decimal because what it is is you don't want to round until the very end. So now we look a little bit better. So the one thing that will bring this down is the power log. So in order to do that, we have to have an, a log statement. So we take the ln of both sides. Just keep this together. This is fine. This is going to come out in the front of this. And what happens to ln e? Cancels out. So this is equal to 0.102 t. And divide both sides by 0.102. As bad as this looks, put it in, and then you'll get your time. And I wanted it in the nearest minute. This was done, always check what, what this is going by. This is per hour. So whatever hours you get, and I can't read it anyway because I wrote over it, but whatever hours you get, convert it to the, uh, the nearest minute. So I think the hours was 0.5, so it should say 16 hours, 30 minutes. If it said 16.2, how would I get the minutes? Is it 20 minutes? No. How do I get the minutes? It's 16.5. So, yeah. Uh, uh, it was 16.5. So, I just need to think ahead a minute for a little bit longer. It was 16.5. So, obviously, half an hour is 30 minutes. But what if it said 16.2? How would you convert the point two to minutes? Multiply it by what? How many minutes in an hour? 60. You would multiply the point two by 60. It's not 20 minutes. Because this goes to 10. Your minutes goes to 6. This goes to like 10. Your minutes goes up to 60. So multiply this by 60. So it would be 16 hours, 12 minutes. This was easy because it was 0.5. And so what I'm saying is, what if it wasn't 0.5? How would you convert it? So whenever you have an exponent as a variable, the only way to get it down is the power log. Okay. Ln e is one of those properties that cancels out. Okay. Now some of it came out fine, and the rest of it didn't. Okay. A baseball player hits a pitch three feet high. He's three. His bat, in other words, is three feet off the ground. He's not batting from the floor. He bats from three feet up where his arms are. He hits the ball towards the left field fence at an angle of 38 degrees with a velocity of 118 feet per second. If the fence, 10 feet high, is 373 feet from, the home, from home plate, and the wind is blowing in from left field at six miles per hour. Will it be a home run? And if so, how much will it clear the fence? If it is not, how far from the top of the wall will it hit? And we always need three decimals. So you have to know how to set this up. You have to know the formula. Well, my well, it depends where it's coming from. This one's coming, you're, you're standing at the plate. It's coming in from left field. So it's coming at you. So what happens when something comes at you with the wind? It cools it up a little bit. So in this case, you have to subtract. If it was at your back, then you're going to add it because it's going to help your ball go further, faster. Um, you're going to have to remember these formulas. Don't forget to pee. Don't forget to be in degrees. Don't forget your parametric mode. Don't forget to convert this wind speed. You're six miles per hour. Do it real easy. You want to convert it to feet per second. There are 5,280 feet in a mile. There are 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in a minute. So this is 3,600. You want to multiply the top, multiply the bottom, and divide it out. Just use a label, and it's a lot easier. Don't forget the T, because this is per time, per second now.
There's your plus three. This is a vertical change. There's your plus three. Oh. Don't forget the negative 16 T or the ball will never come back down. Um, trace it. Trace it until you get close to the word X is 373. Give me three decimals on the time. And that's, that's close enough. Be a little over 73, 373. And show me that you're over 10 feet. Yes, it clears the fence. And it said how far from the top of the wall would it be? Say this was at 9 point, let's say 9.300. Then I'm here, I'm 0.8 feet away from the top. Okay. Just be careful how this is at. If you hit it here, then you're 0.8 feet away if it was 9.2. Obviously, this one goes over. And I can pretty much think you're going to see something very similar to this. I know there's a wind scene. The difference between yours and Pre Calc regular is the same problem, except one has a wind speed, one doesn't. They don't so have the a wind, wind speed. speed if it's going with the object and you add it, right? Yes. It's going down to the yes. Okay. Something like if you're walking and it's windy out, you know like when, you, when the wind is behind you, it really pushes you along? When the wind is in front of you, like it, you feel like you're struggling to, to walk. Good. Okay. Here's your bacteria. This is a good one, too. Here's your basic, and don't panic. Here's your basic format. All of them work off of this, even your interest one. This is your initial, this is your, what it's doing, your rate, this is your time. How do you, so, do you use that one when the wind isn't like a percent? Yeah, so you use them all the time. Even if it's a percent, say your percent was 10%, it was increasing, this would say 1 plus 0.10. This is always your rate. But if you look at this formula, I'm just going to do it without an annual, this is, this is the same thing. I just threw up. This is your rate. It's always this format. If you remember AB to the X, that's all you have to remember. Mm -hmm. If you decrease, if, if you have a half life, if you have a half life or you have something that's decreasing over time, water in the tank, if you fill the tank and it's decreasing, then it's 1 minus R. That's why this is always your rate. B is your rate. If it's as simple as this triple, then, then it's three times it. Mm -hmm. So you, you, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. You only add the one plus if it's a percent? Yes. So, okay, so. So this is why. If you invested $100, okay. and you make, let's make life simple, and you make 10%, if you multiply this by, like this, what do you get? You're going to get five. But what do you get? Ten dollars, right? You get ten dollars. This is your interest made. But then you're going to take ten percent of ten dollars. You want to keep rolling your money in. The one plus multiplies it by one first. Just rolls your money in. So now when I multiply it by this, I get a hundred and ten dollars. Okay. So the next time around, I'm ten percent of a hundred and ten. It just rolls it in. The the one minus. Say say remember the one we did the calculations and they were decreasing by. 15% a year, we did 1 minus 15%. So therefore, it retains 85% of the population every year. So it decreased. So we start like this. We put 500 out, <coughs> sorry, 500 units of bacteria in here. We triple. And here's the problem. Every five hours, not every hour, every five. So this is a cycle, x divided by 5. So if you kind of keep track of where you start at the zero, and then every five hours you'd be tripling, if you put this into your calculator and you look at your table, it should be exactly what you anticipated. So after two hours, you're just <coughs> excuse me, plugging in for x after 10, 
one day you need to convert it to 24 hours, and one week we need to convert it to a 10 million 168 hours. Just plug it in. Could you could you put it in your y equals and then go to your table? Absolutely. Just make sure if you're if you're using hours in your formula, you're using hours in your table. Okay. Questions? And again, same same process. If you're going to increase on something, there's your rate. One plus that. The one just rolls it in. If you're going to decrease half-life, one minus. Actually, the half-life, you could use a half. You don't have to say one minus a half. But if like you're decreasing population or water in the tank or something like that, one minus. Ugh. So for the for letter D or number six, the one we need to just keep it in scientific notation. Yes, yes. If you want to move your zeros, you can, but that's a lot of zeros to move. Okay, here's the population decrease. So your population is decreasing. So you're decreasing at a rate. You need to find a rate. Remember how small your rate is? It's just when we flip it to a decimal. So your rate is very small. Um, this said annually, quarterly. Um, I really meant to take out the quarterly and the monthly because it's kind of weird to, to compound your population decreasing. They really, they really don't only do that with money. But um, if you just kind of stick with the annual part, that's good. So you're decreasing from, this is what you start, this is what you started at. This is what you, this one's so weird, this will work. This is what you started at. Here's your rate of decrease. We don't know your rate. So we wanted to end up with 75,000. So again, Divide this. This only belongs to this guy. Only here. Not to this one. These are being multiplied. Divide this. Just reduce it a little if you want to. Or you can just leave it. Get rid of the zeros if it makes life a little easier. I don't know what's going on with my board. And when you want to get rid of this, if this was a square, we would square root, right? It's a tenth. You tenth root. Remember, this has to be really small. It's a rate. To percent. I want to take off work. I would leave it. Three decimals. And remember what, I don't know if you remember back when we did this graphically and we had them intersect, we could barely see it because of your, of your window. If it's 0 0.015, it's like right on the y-axis, but it did find it when we did an intersect, if you remember back. But then again, you're changing your window. And the last one, don't worry, I wouldn't worry about the quarterly. And really, I don't know that anybody ever decreases these things quarterly or annually. And this last one, this is a good one to, to go through too. Graph it off of your base function, which is just an exponential curve. Um, X minus 1 in your numerator, tell me what these are doing. Um, Anything in the parentheses, you're shifting the opposite way. Make sure you use the word horizontally. Make sure you use the word vertically. Make sure you use the word reflection. Did you print out the, uh, the, um, oh, no, you put it on the No, I didn't put it on it. No, no. I didn't put it on it. No, no. Um, and I forgot to print it out. Um, I will put it on the No, no, Okay. I can't do that from the iPad. Oh. Okay, so again, find the limit as you approach infinity. Um, watch your graph. This is more like a, a one-sided thing from each side. You're looking at it. Let me see if I can make it sense. Are we okay with this domain range? Yeah. Okay, watch, watch when you come from the side where they approach. The one has no limit. It's going on and on. The other one is approaching three, because there's where your asymptote is, y equals three. 
one is going on and on and on, the right hand side, the left hand side, no. Just make sure that you use the right words in here. Reflection, shift it horizontally, shift it vertically. If you don't, you're not going to get credit for it. Um, vertical stretch, uh, we hardly use the horizontal, mostly like a vertical stretch or shrink, but you're factoring that by a factor of two, by a factor of one half. Make sure you use the right word. Yes. It says, the limit as it approaches infinity, well, if you take a look at your graph, I don't want to touch the screen because I know it's going to go crazy, but if you take a look at your graph over here as it goes to the right, as x goes to the right over here, this is, doesn't have a limit. It keeps on going and going and going and going. There's no asymptote. As it goes to the left, there's your asymptote here, y is equal to 3. So as it goes to the left, it approaches y is 3. But as it goes to the right, there's no limit. Okay. Any questions? Good? All right, let's take the last one. Wait, there's two more on the... Oh, there's two more on that one? Yeah. It's converting from polar... Oh, the polar. Oh, sorry. The polar. You're right. Yeah, and make sure you know those. Um, I'm just having a heck of a time with my graph here. I don't know why. It's like blank after this. I don't know what's going on here. Of course, right when I need this to work one more day. Yeah, I have no idea what's going on. Alright, let's just see if we can do this together. This is important, guys. Make sure that you know this. If you're converting... have a board. Okay, so if you're going to convert from your regular rectangular points to your polar point, graph this first. This uses x and y. So the things that use x and y are Pythagorean theorem and tangents. So you want to make sure that you convert it to um, a polar coordinate and your polar, say, give me the angle. Uh, give me the radius, give me the angle. So these are the guys that will help you convert. However, what helps you even more is just plotting this point. Because it has to exist on your rectangular as well as your as your polar. So if you drop this triangle, this is your 1-1. One, one. What's your radius? Radical 2. You can plug it into this formula, you'll get your radical 2, but this is your special triangle. This is a 45. So this is pi over 4. So this is 4 pi over 4, so 1 less is? So radical 2, 3 pi over 4. There's your conversion. And the second one, 0, 2, where does that exist? Right up here. So you can absolutely plug it into this. Your radius is going to be what? How far is this going away from me? 2. And what angle is right up there? Pi over 2. Okay? Use your graph for those. You're, you're probably going to see a very simple one just like this. Remember to somehow show me work. Just don't write an answer down. The hardest part when I go to grade these is seeing your work. You have to show me work. By showing work, you mean showing the graph? So, yeah, this is perfect. I mean, there's really, if you wanted to plug this in, 
If you wanted to try to do your tangent, you're going to say, oh, my tangents are defined. Oh, this has to be a 90 degree angle. I really don't need to see that part. You, you can kind of tell this is a 90. So if you want to draw a circle around like this, that's, that's fine too. But show me some kind of work. I mean, it's very easy to look at the point zero two and say, radius of two, 90 degrees. I know where that is. But then you just get one point for your answer. I have to see work on these. Even if they look so simple. Then you're going to two cut you're going the opposite way. Okay, these had these had basic formulas. So you're going from one to the next. So plug in and watch where this is. This is at pi. This is here. At negative one zero. This is your x, y, your cosine, sine. So you could even put it in your calculator. You'll have a calculator. The whole exam. Radius of 2. Cosine is negative 1. So x is negative 2. Radius of 2. Cosine is 0. So y is 0. And, and if I graph this, doesn't that look like the point? Negative 2, 0? Doesn't it, wouldn't it show up over there? If this came out and it showed up over here, I'd say, whoops, something happened there. <clears throat> there's your radius, there's your negative 2. It's just like the opposite way. And do the same for this guy. This is pi over 6. That's a 30 degree. So you know your sine is 1 half. And you know your cosine is radical 3 over 2. The rest can you do, or you want me to plug it in and... That's the y equals r sine theta 1. Y equals... R sine theta... Oh no, this was just, there are not erased from before. Oh. Uh, there was a, my axis. Okay. So again, plug this in, radical 3 times. Okay, so say you're doing the cosine radical 3 over 2. This would become 3 over 2. Um, for x... And then your y becomes radical 3 times 1 half, radical 3 over 2. Make sure you leave them in the right format. All right, so let's see if I can hit number 7 and see if this works. I don't know. I'm not even going to let me cancel it. All right, let's see if this one works. What's going to happen to that one? Maybe if I don't touch it. Let's see if we can get through as many of these as possible. Maybe it's not going to work. All right, so remember what your quadratic is. Remember with your quadratic, when you get these all to one side, I put the, we just, sometimes I left some multiple choice so that you kind of see what I'm looking for for an answer. Otherwise, you're going to say, how do I solve this? So get them all to one side. Be careful because this is equal. When it's equal, the points are filled in. Factor this. Set your factors. Put this in your y equals. Go to the left of negative 4 is y positive or negative. To the right is it positive or negative and then just figure out what you want if you want it to the positive give me all the pluses if you want it to the negative give me the negatives okay. um, you can put this in your calculator or because this is a parabola and it's opening up just kind of like go like this so it's positive up here right it's positive over here I'm still not liking it. It's positives up there and negatives down there. Okay. 
redo this one. I won't cut it. So. Assigning domain, make sure you put the F of X into the G, however way it asks. Um, you have a domain, three domain restrictions. It was on your formula sheet. I wrote them on the back. Uh, in a fraction, the denominator cannot be zero. In a radical, set it greater than or equal to zero. In a radical under a denominator, set it greater than zero. And just find that. Number three, did everybody still with number three? These yeah. are the ones I definitely wanted to pick. Yeah. Number three, it's already one term. So you're all on one side. So take the zeros of the numerator, take the zeros of the denominator. Just be careful. Your numerator goes by the inequality sign. It's equal. So fill in the numerator zeros. Your denominator zeros can never be filled in. Why? Good. There can't be a zero in the denominator. So no matter what that sign is, the denominator one cannot be filled in. And again, graph it. We, we did, I think we did the big one where we put everything to one side, right? Yeah. Good. We did those. Okay. Easy way to do this, graph this. Um, if you're looking at your domain, um, it must be positive under the radical. Uh, there is no domain restriction in that denominator, so you're okay there, and it will be positive. So really all you have to look at is the numerator. The domain in the bottom is all real numbers. There's nothing that will cause you to get anything negative. Actually, you'll never get a negative out of that. So it's only your numerator that's going to give you grief. Graphing it sometimes helps. Look at your table, see what it's looking for. Number five, can you guys do number five? Yeah. The only one that you have a problem with in number five, and I didn't put it out there, was the divide. The divide will give you another domain restriction if you then have a denominator. So just be careful if I give you a divide. Number six goes way back. I think this is like before we hit any of your units, actually. I think this was part of in the, in the very beginning. Absolute value inequality. Remember it's just like absolute value radicals. Isolate the absolute value, isolate the radical. Yeah, George. Um why didn't you for the second grade, why didn't you add two to the five? I did. You could. Oh, but it came out to be a five instead of a seven. So I added two, but I never changed it. So seven. Okay, so seven. I wrote these over so quick. So this five should say seven. I added two, that should say seven. I don't know where the rest of this work is. It's, oh, it's sitting sorry. over uh -huh. here. Okay, let me go here. If this should say, see this little cursor oh. that I'm moving? That should say 7. Okay, I thought it was going to That's the first part of section 3. Yep. So, and multiply by 3 and then solve it. Because for some odd reason, it copied it onto the next problem. So the first one, remember, when you have an or statement, where do your arrows go? Like ors on a boat, out. So one's going to be to the positive, one's going to be to the negative. When you isolate it and you bring this out, this one stays the same regardless of what it is. This one takes the negative right here of whatever that is and switch that sign. So you see these arrows going out that way, out that way? That's your or statement. This down here is an and statement. An and statement, if you remember back, we can build an and statement ourselves. We just drop it down. Isolate it first, drop it down. Unfortunately, the rest of 
number six is now moved onto the top of this problem. <laughs> so don't forget, yours would say negative 21, positive 21, then you would add one, and you could leave it like that. Um, this solution set, again, here's an OR statement. It's isolated. There's your OR. Keep it the same way to the right. Take the negative to the left. Reverse the sign. Solve them both and then put them on a number line and give me your interval. You probably will see one of these. Um, this, everybody knows plug, this composition, you plug into the F first, then you take your answer, plug it into the J. Number eight. Good. And I think we did this in class. Okay, we can do number eight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what's good to note about number eight, guys? Make sure you didn't have a factor. Oh, you didn't have a factoring? No. Uh. Yeah. Where's your dial factoring? I must have missed the dial It's on number three. Yeah, but this is a different oh, thing. Number so, the determinant, TX, make sure you know how to solve these algebraically. Show me your work. Where you're multiplying 2 times 5 minus 4 times 3. Don't do it in your calculator and give me an answer. A two by two determinant, you have to show me your work. So you know that's going to be there. Mm -hmm. All right. And the last one, I don't have it, is your dial phantom. I might just have it in your sheet notes. Number three. Number three. Um, I don't remember how to do this. You don't remember how to do this? I might, but I don't Calculator first. Put it in. One, 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 thirty-one, one, two, three, forty-one. Put it in your calculator. Get your matrix back. Then you're going to solve for your x and your y in terms of z. Oh, right. Right. Okay. And then you're going to make z has to be positive. It has to be greater than zero. You're going to set it greater than or equal to zero. Remember, you're going to make your chart. Go back and look at the ones that we did in class because we're not going to have time, unfortunately, to get to this part. I did want to hand back your limit test. But remember, remember how did I recognize this as a dial and an eight? There's two equations, but there's three variables. There's two equations, but there's three variables. I handed it back? Okay, I do have a couple of people in there then. Okay, so I think I handed you back everything that I had here. I just wanted to make sure I did, so that you have some something to set in front of I have, remember, tomorrow's the short answer part. And if you owe me a book, make sure I get it. Short answer versus what? Short answer versus long time.
Oh, okay. Oh, okay. 